different ways on that one, but just starting with maybe Christian Brown and Peyton Watson, just what do they bring off the bench today for you guys? Yeah, energy. Yeah, I mean, uh, Christian just won defensive player of the game. Thought his activity was uh, was just you know, terrific. That's how he needs to play, man. You know, you look at his stat sheet, one of four from the field, who cares? You know, the defense, the energy, the loose balls, the steals, the deflections, running the floor, cutting without it. You know, that, that's what Christian Brown is. And then Peyton, once again, the fourth quarter, I loved it. They came down one time, no one had him. He pulled up for three, and that was one of those, no, 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 great shot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but he's, you know, the kids got balls, man. And uh, I thought two young players impacted the game at a high level. Uh, Jamal Murray, 10 assists, one turnover. I think last two games, now it's 19 total assists, only three turnovers. Great number. Uh, Nicola, Aaron, you know, um, you know, just a lot of guys stepped up. And our defense got better as the game went along. We had zero defense. We had a little bit of defense. We had a lot more defense, and we had great defense. And um, obviously, I think the key to the game would be end of that third quarter, 11-0, start the fourth quarter, 12-3. That was when we took control of the game, and it was fun to watch that group go out there and play at a high level on both ends of the floor. They had 10 threes in the first half, only one in the yeah. second. How'd you shut that down? Uh, just an awareness. You know, I, I felt we were. Um, didn't have the urgency. Simons came out, and you know he's a guy that you have to get off the three-point line, and he had uh, way too many easy looks in that first half. But then the other guys, you know, like Reith had two. Uh, Camera had a couple. Um, Matisse Thibel had a couple. So just because a guy may not be a runoff, Vic, you still have to close it out and contest. And um, so I thought in the second half, just our urgency. I mean, it's, it's easy to see. If you, I, I didn't even tell you the numbers. It's easy to see the difference from first half and second half with just the energy and the fly around. And we had some tremendous possessions in that second half. And uh, we were able to get out and run. 15 fast break points for us is a pretty good number. How important is it to be able to go to some different lineups in these situations where I know you, ch you change up the rotation a couple of times, bringing in Mike early in the, in the second quarter in this one, just playing around with it, especially kind of heading into the All-Star break. Are you learning more about this group as you go along? Yeah, and uh, guys are proven to be very flexible and uh, doing whatever is asked of them. You know, the hard part is, you know, um, I can't play Reggie and Jamal together really long because one has to come in for the other. So that's where the idea of getting Reggie out to start the second or fourth quarter and having Michael out there with that group is just so we can bring Reggie back in for Jamal. But Reggie and Jamal have been good together, so sometimes you run into that issue. But um, yeah, we're, we're versatile. You know, we, uh, Peyton can play the three and the four. CB can guard one through four. Um, so guys off the bench, you know, have been willing to do whatever it takes to help us win. And, and tonight they had a really good night for us, which was great to see. I know it happened late. Do you have any update or feel for how Yeah, no, I got to, uh, the first thing I do when I'm out of here, but then I go talk to our training staff to see, uh, you know, look like maybe a little bit of a hammy. And um, that's always scary, the soft tissue injury. So hopefully it wasn't anything major. The best thing about this is that we have th three days now to get ready for a game on Thursday. And I think after 51 games, our guys need a break mentally, physically, emotionally. And uh, we're going we're gonna to give them the, net, the rest that they all deserve and need. On, on top of just sort of the development and the shot and all that for Peyton, how much have you seen sort of a development in terms of his sort of hunger to compete down the stretch in games? It's another one where he has a huge fourth quarter offensively to help you guys out in some of the yoga trust games. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, you know, there's two games in a row where he's, he's been excellent in the fourth quarter. Um, scoring the ball, rebounding. He had a great play in transition. They're running. He could easily have given up on the play, but he ran all the way through and took away a transition three with a big deflection. Um, yeah, he's young. He wants to play. And both he and CB realize, you know, the better they play, the more impact they have to winning. You know, that's going to give them more chances to play as we approach the last, you know, 31 games, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, Peyton is definitely developing and gaining more and more confidence. Uh, the end of the third quarter stretch, you mentioned the 11-0 the run. Uh, Joker Jamal, I think, mm. were, were very uh, intrinsic for that. Just how, like, you all, you often go to that just consistently throughout the game. Just when they do, they understand the moments. Just in terms of like, we need a run here. Just that's the experience that they have. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they're out there, Ryan, saying, hey, we you know we we need to go on an eleven zero run here. But we also understand it's really important how we close this quarter. Something we talk about in all of our huddles, we talk about it at halftime, after games, when watching film. You want to win the last few minutes of every quarter. 
that gives you momentum into the next one. And uh, getting Jamal back out there, running Nicole the whole third, you know, that proved to be very productive and fruitful for us tonight. So, um, but when they're operating and clicking like that, it's so fun to watch. It's a thing of beauty uh, if you're a Nuggets fan. And then it's so hard to guard if you're an opposing team because they're both so capable of scoring passing, making plays for each other, as well as for their teammates. So, um, you know, but a really, really important run. And what I liked about that, we just built on that in the start of the fourth and the defense to start the fourth when we had Aaron as our five, got Nicola out, switched everything. And those guys were just everywhere. I can't wait to watch the film and, you know, tag some of those clips so we can show our guys. Like, this is who we need to be closer to 48 minutes. You, you talked about the veteran leadership before in the pregame uh, interviews. Does it excite you when you see KCP walk out and, and he's talking with Christian Brown and then here comes Peyton Watts, he's in Peyton Watts, and then you see these two defensively the way they were doing. I mean, that's got to be what you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. but that's, that's that communication, that's that leadership. No doubt. It's, um, and it, it, it really does take a village because the coaches, we're doing it, the veterans are doing it, and to their credit, the young guys are listening. I mean, like, if I'm a guy that wants to become a better defensive player, I'm going to watch and learn from KCP. He's one of the best perimeter defenders in the entire NBA. And uh, so to have guys that are willing to uh, speak. And the funny thing is, Charles Clasp was with KCP in Detroit many years ago. And he said when he was in Detroit, KCP never talked. And to see him come full circle, be a veteran now, be a two-time world champion, I think now it's like uh, he's, he's paying it forward. All the guys that helped him when he was a young player, now he's giving back to the young guys that are behind him. And that's, that's what you want to see. So we have tremendous leadership uh, from KCP, from a guy like DeAndre, and uh, all of our young players are really fortunate to have those guys looking out for them. One more. The, the trade deadline is on, uh, coming up on the 8th. What, what will you and Cal do? between now and then just to sort of figure out where you're at and consider what to do? I'm in Denver. I know where I'm at. I'm in Denver, and uh, we're going to be in L.A. on Thursday. Uh, you know, Calvin and his staff, I'm sure, are fielding phone calls, but I can't imagine we're actively calling many teams right now. Um, I'm not sure what happened around the NBA tonight, but going into tonight's game, after 50 games, we're a half game out of first place. Are we satisfied? No. I think you always have to have the – be responsible enough to look within and say, hey, can we do anything that makes us better? That's always a question you have to ask. But um, knowing Calvin and the brief conversations we've had, there is nothing where we're, Calvin's on the phones, burning up the phone lines to 29 other teams because we think that we have a tremendous starting unit. And we have some guys on our bench that are young and developing and have a chance to be really good players for years to come. So, um, But you never know what kind of phone call you'll get. That's the crazy thing as next Thursday approaches. Um, you know, this is a weird business. Strange things happen. But I love the group in that locker room. I love where we're at. And more importantly, I think we really have another level that we can get to. And uh, the fact that we're, I think, 9-3 and three in our last 12, playing pretty good basketball with four to go before the break, um, I'm pretty pleased with the group. I'm proud of them. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it, everybody.